Hey guys, it's John P from Geek Beat. Guess what? Today we're going to take a look at a step by step guide on how to set up the Power MIG 180 Dual for flux core welding specifically. Now, if we wanted to set it up to do MIG welding, it's a slightly different process. We'll have a whole different video for that. So look at that, please. Don't think that you can do this setup procedure and then MIG weld. It's not gonna work for you. You have to do some different stuff. So this is just if we're gonna use flux cord wire. Why would we use flux cord wire? Because it doesn't require any shielding gas. The wire itself actually has flux in the middle of it. And as it melts, it the flux uh, turns to gas and that's what shields the welding pool. So. Without further ado, let's get started. I've got all the parts that we need. They're all the things that come in the box and currently the uh, welder is set up exactly the way it was when I took it out of the box. I'm assuming that if you just bought one of these, yours is identical to mine, how the way mine came. And if not, uh, hopefully we'll cover everything you need and you can ask questions if, uh, if something's different or doesn't look quite right for you. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to break this down into uh, various pieces. So uh, we'll save the electrical decision for last uh, because that's pretty easy. That's probably the easiest thing there is. And let's start with our work clamp. So what's going to happen is you're going to get your work clamp in two different pieces. This should not be intimidating. It's not a problem that they're not uh, put together, but we are going to assemble them. And to do so, we're gonna use a little 9 16 inch uh, crescent wrench. So what we've got here is we've got a nice thick six gauge cable and the clamp, and the clamp has a couple of little nuts on it. So I'm going to loosen just that outer nut and we're going to take one end of our cable and we're going to feed it through from the bottom this little hole so it's coming from the inside now it doesn't it's not going to kill anything if you don't do it exactly the way I'm doing it but I like to have the uh, the wire on the bottom of the little terminal thing because it makes for a nice smooth piece here and uh, uh, you know aesthetics are something when you're talking about your gear but also functionality when you don't have little things poking up to stick on things that's good so I'm tightening it by hand and then I'm going to give it a nice little tightening with the wrench and we're all good okay so that's all it takes to make sure that your clamp is on the cable next step is getting the clamp actually in the I mean getting the yeah getting the clamp attached to our workpiece now this is where things get a little tricky because we're doing flux core welding you're gonna look in here you're gonna see there's two different terminals there's a positive and a negative terminal now this is exactly how it came with the little short cable attached to the negative terminal and that's what we want for flux core welding. We are going to feed the other end of our work clamp here into the little hole on the front of the welder right there and it's going to come through and we're going to remove this wing nut from the positive terminal. That's your nickname isn't it? Wing That's right wing nut. So we're going to remove it from the positive terminal and we're going to stick this thing on there. Again, I like to keep stuff kind of neat and tidy. You'll notice that this other one, um, the flat part is up against the welder. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to make sure that that's nice and flat. It makes good contact with the welder and we're going to put the wing nut back on it. Oops. A little tricky. I'm not left-handed. Okay, so believe it or not, we're like halfway done. Okay, not quite, but we do have our working cable connected, so we can just set this out of the way. 
um, you will pretty much never have to mess with that cable once it's assembled. The only thing you'll have to do is if you're going to switch the machine between flux core welding and MIG welding, um, one of the things you'll have to do is m swap these two wires. I don't know why, but you do have to have one of them positive, one of them negative. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to attach our gun because it's not going to work if we can't squeeze the trigger and get the juice out of this sucker. So, first thing we're going to do is there is a little, um, we'll call this a knob, and we are going to just loosen that up a little bit so that we can take the end of this cable and plug it right up into here. Now you'll notice that there are a couple of little orange kind of seals and some holes because the gas goes through those if you're using it for that purpose. And we're going to shove this in there nice and tight all the way. It's all the way in there. And now I can come back and crank this little knob tight. That helps this make contact and that, that, that keeps our current flowing. Next thing we're going to do is we have a little four prong cable here. Uh, it actually only has two pins in it, um, but it's a four prong adapter. This is going to get plugged in to this bad boy right here. And once it's in there, we're just going to screw the, the uh, little post to it and we're done. Okay. so. Now we've made the physical connection that we need for our gun. It's time for us to load it up with some wire. So the nice thing about this kind of welding is that the material is constantly being fed into the weld pool. You don't have to do it by hand. We are going to need a set of pliers for this particular piece of work only because we're going to have to cut the end of this. You'll see that in a minute. But before we can fit our little spool that comes with the kit for free uh, on the machine, we actually have to remove an adapter. Now, just so you can see it, this adapter is here because you can buy 10 pound uh, spools, very large. It's an eight inch spool of material and this would go right on there and we'd have a lot more material, many times the amount of material uh, to feed through the welder if you're doing a lot of welding. But uh, that's not what it comes with. So all we're going to do is we're going to remove this two inch adapter. There's a wing nut. We're going to unscrew the wing nut and we'll take that out. We will also remove this little white plastic bushing. Bushing, yeah, that's what we'll call it. And bingo, there goes the two inch adapter. So nice and simple. We'll just set that over on the table and we're going to kind of reverse the process by sticking our flux core wire right in the machine. Keep in mind there was some paper here. You're going to puncture the paper. No big deal. It's supposed to do that. Then we're going to take our little plastic bushing. We're going to put it there and we're going to tighten this up. Now, this is a tricky part because I can tighten it so much that essentially the thing will not even turn. And that's not what we want. This whole unit is kind of spring loaded. So what we want to do is tighten it enough that it's not going to come off, but you can still rotate this with your hand because it's going to be fed through the, the machine. One other thing that's tricky, pay close attention because we want the wire to be coming from the top and feeding into here. It's going to come over the top. If it comes from the bottom, that's going to cause problems. So over the top and into there. Okay? Now, all we have to do at this point is open this little uh, piece of equipment up and feed the material into it. But it's a little tricky. So step one, the first thing we're going to do is as much as possible straighten out our cable. The reason why is that 
we're going to have to feed this little tiny wire all the way through here. So if the more kind of wound up it is, the harder it is to feed it through. So we're going to straighten that out. Now, there is a tension adjustment knob right here. This little black knob is, is called the tensioner. You pull it, you just pull it down. And what happens is it releases this little mechanism at the top. This is the upper drive wheel. So we're going to swing that up so that we have access to the interior. And then there's a little plate right here. It's really, really easy. We're going to unscrew these two little screws and remove the outside plate. Okay, now we're faced with some fun stuff. Inside we have a little drive wheel. This is actually going to turn. What happens is these two pieces, when the machine is on, this piece here and this piece here spin and they pull the wire through here. This does not, this wheel does not push the wire. These pull the wire. Like an old film projector. It is kind of, yeah. You have a reel and you're sticking the film right through it. Okay, so our goal is this little this little um, slot right here, we're going to put the wire in here and it's going to also slot down in this groove and then through here and into that little nozzle. Okay, in order to get it through the gun, it's actually a little tight uh, the way we have it set up. So we're going to loosen this knob just a tad and pull the gun outward so that we can so we can have a little room to angle in there. Okay? Now we're about ready to go, but there's a few details that we have to check on first. Number one, when we said the size of this flux core wire was 0 0.035, we have to make sure that we have the right size rollers on here and the right size guide. So this little piece, this silver piece, it says on it 0.035 to 0.045. So that's the range of wire that will fit in the groove. And we have 0.035. That's good news. Now if we were using different, a different size of wire, which Let's say if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you buy a spool of this, you're going to get 0 0.025 inner shield wire most likely. In that case, we will have to take this piece off. You just literally take it off and we'd put this one on, which is 0.025 to 0.035. In fact, since we're using 0 0.035, we could go ahead and put this on there. But that's exactly how it came and it'll work, so we're going to leave it the way it is. The same thing applies with this little roller wheel. You're going to notice that right on either side of it, it says 0 .030, 0 .045. That means it'll take anything in that range. So that's okay. So far, the machine is pretty much set up just for the flux cord wire we want to stick into it. All right, it's time to do this. So the first thing we're going to do, um, when, I, when, when we stuck this wire on here, it's got a little piece that's just hooked through the hole. This is the end of our wire. We're going to unhook that. And for God's sake, we are not going to let go of this. Because if we do, this thing will unspin. I mean, it will unravel at a rate you cannot believe. And you do not want that to happen. So we're going to pull it forward a little bit. And... We're going to take our pliers and we're going to cut it off, trying to get the end of this just as clean as we can. That's a nice, clean uh, cut. And I'm just with my fingers kind of straightening this out just a tad because we want it to go through as straight as we can. You're going to see why in a second. So there's a little hole here and I'm going to feed it through the hole and we watch as it comes right through that groove right over that little wheel. It's kind of getting stuck there a little bit. So I'm going to kind of mess with it to get to go over it. Keep it going through that groove and our goal is to get it down into that hole. It's really tricky. So thank goodness we don't always have to be um, changing our wire when we're welding. 
because this is not the fun part of it. That's why you buy a big spool. That's right, you buy a big spool, don't have to change as much. Now, I'm trying to get that through there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it out a little more, see if I can get a little more room so I can get maybe a finger in there, something, and just lift this up. Bingo, I got it in there. Okay, so now the wire is in there. I'm gonna just shove it through uh, several more inches. I'm just kind of feeding it manually into there. And we're ready to put the top down so that we clamp it right in there. And we're gonna lift this tensioner up to lock it in place. Whew. Now I can let go of it. We're making sure that it's still all lined up in there. It is. Now I'm going to pull the little uh, cable back in and tighten that knob. Whew. We're almost done. The last thing is we will uh, reattach this outer cover. So we're going to screw this back on. There's little arrows to help you make sure that you that you get it um, in the right, well, let's see here. There we go. In the right way, although I don't think you could even do it the wrong way, but that's in there. And voila, we're almost, almost finished. Okay, the only other thing that we need now is some power, then we'll be able to weld. So. We happen to have a 220 volt outlet over here, so I am going to choose the 220. But if you had 110, it wouldn't matter. It's the exact same thing. There's no settings that you have to, to switch or anything. We're just going to take this power cable. Let me shut the side of this. And turn this around a little bit for you here. We're gonna take the power cable and we're gonna plug it in right here. Just kind of turn it a little and you'll see it just drops in. So it wouldn't go in there and then when I turn, it drops in. Now I'm gonna take this outer ring and just twist it and it locks. It snaps right in place, done. That's it. Okay, so there's one last little thing that we need to do in order to be completely ready to weld. That is, we have to go ahead and feed the wire through the rest of the cable. So, let me plug this in, and then we're gonna make that happen. Okay, we've got it all plugged in. Now, it's time to power it on. There's a little switch on the front, power it on. You'll hear the fan start up, although we're not gonna weld anything. There is one other thing we're gonna do to make this faster. On the front of our machine, there are two knobs. One is for power, one is for speed. We're gonna crank the speed all the way up, put it on 10. I wish it went to 11, but we'll put it on 10, and that's gonna make sure that when we squeeze the, uh, the wire, it comes out really fast. In fact, I'll show you. Dave, can you come over here and take a look at this wheel, and let's watch. I'm gonna turn it all the way down to one, and we'll see how slow it goes. I'm squeezing the trigger, and you'll see it's making it um, feed pretty slowly. Now, I'm gonna turn up to five. That's five. Now we're gonna go to 10. That's 10, so you can see how fast it is. Now what we're doing is we're just waiting for the material to come out right here. It takes a minute because there's several feet of material coming out of this thing. There it is. That's it. So we're that's it, we're set. We are ready to start welding. Um, the only thing we would do now is we'd use our little MIG pliers and we'll snip this thing off. Here's a little trick. This is one of the reasons you want a dedicated set of pliers that are actually made for welding. You'll notice that there is a gap between the blade and the outer edge here. That gap happens to be the exact length that we want this cable to be when it's cut. So I put the nozzle right up against there and snip, and that's about how much you want sticking out when it's time to weld. Okay, actually, there's one last little thing I just noticed, and that is the nozzle itself. 
You'll notice this is a little kind of metal looking nozzle and there's a big gap around the outside of the contact tip. See there's a gap in there? That is for when we're using shielding gas. Gas comes through here and it comes out from around there. But we don't need to use this particular nozzle for flux core welding. So we're going to take that off and in our little accessory bag there is a, con there's a nozzle made for flux core welding. It's smaller and it doesn't have room for gas to come through and we're just going to slip that on and that's it. Now all we have to do is put the work clamp on our material like this table, squeeze the trigger, we're welding. Okay guys, that's how we go through the entire setup for flux core. Keep in mind we have a different video for the MIG welding so check that one out. There's a few little differences and that's about it. Head on over to geekme.tv and do a search for Power MIG. You'll find the complete tutorial with all the other stuff, helmets, gear, accessories, everything else to really make this worth it. Thumbs up if you liked it. I'm John P. See you later.